Hello and welcome my dear skill modelers to my small hobby YouTube channel. My name is Tomo and today we're going to be sticking with a 170 second scale theme. In this video we're going to be taking a look at two models from Thin Mill Models. Thin Mill Models you say? Thin Mill Models. Thin Mill Models. This is their webpage. You can find them via www.thinmillmodels.com and when you open the site you are greeted with this pretty rudimentary page and a bunch of links. Um, must warn you that a lot of these links don't really work properly um, apart from you know about us, contact, 170 second scale. And I think references too. Let's check references. No, references doesn't work. No. Okay, so anyway, we're interested in 170 second scale military vehicles, in particular these two babies here. See, the Sisu X180 Posse, which is this model, pretty cool, pretty cool, in its various paint schemes and markings, and the other one, the older, older, younger brother, uh, the Sisu XA185 Posse, which is yeah, basically the same vehicle, a little bit different, but no different markings. Um, the company also produces this one, the Sisu A45 Proto, which is a new one. I don't have this one, but this is a fairly recent release, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Everything else you can check out for yourself. So let's get on with the video. A little bit on the backstory. Last year I got in touch with the owner of Finn Mill Models and uh, we came to an agreement that he is going to sell us a couple of his models. Then he asked me which type of models we want to buy and I told him that well, because he only has two, uh, give me two of those, ten each. And then he started asking me questions, which kind of decals do I want with the models and that got me thinking, what is that all about? Well, he explained to me that the models are basically in the same boxes, only come with different types of decals depending on which version of the vehicle you want to build. And I thought to myself, okay, but why? And then he said, well, it's cheaper this way. Okay, but decals. Anyway, we got an agreement, he gave me a good price. I bought them from Fin directly from Finland and they arrived in about a week. Upon opening the boxes, I found um, this. Yeah. Um, you'll see the boxes when we do a close up review, but oh, good lord. Now, the box size. The box size of the container in which it comes, it, it's not bad. I mean, it's pretty sturdy, it's thin. It doesn't have to be thicker because the model is pretty small and I get it. You can pack more of these babies into a bigger box and you can ship them all around the world. Simple, peasy, easy, great. But, um, well then there's a thing called um, art. Yeah. Not only does it have a um, serial number for you can find the model online, it doesn't even have a AN code or you know the unique identifier number, which every single product usually has. But okay, I can get with the EN code, but the serial number of a model, really? So I'll take a picture of this and I'll put it up in the corners. It's up there now, so you can see it in their definition. It's, it's not appealing, is it? Um, in fact, ever since I bought the model, the models from the purse, from the guy, I, I didn't even sell one. And the reason that I didn't sell one is not because they are crappy. Again, the model itself, the sprue quality is absolutely fantastic. It's the packaging that sucks. People just kind of go past it thinking it's just some sort of stand for something else. It, it I mean, the label is, crossed out with a marker sharpie and written in sharpie i mean come on there you have a sticker on the outside depicting which type of model it is but really it's a sticker it's a decal it's really cheap to print and if you have only two models 
you can just put all the variants inside one model and the, let the builder choose which one you want to build. Stickers are really cheap. So price saving there, you know, it's questionable. So the other frustrating thing about the packaging is that the models are not marked. There are no serial numbers on them. Um, in Scalemates you can see that there's a COM7002 for this particular one, the UN um, Norwegian Posse. Um, and you can clearly see that it's relabeled. It's not. It's now combat models as opposed to fin mill models, which I think gets a little bit of a branding issue on their part. I don't know what's going on there, but okay. Um, and there is a serial number or a EA number, um, but not on the model. Or it is on the model, but it's covered over a sticker that depicts which kind of decals are in the box, which is so confusing. Um, it's cool that they have an instruction plan here. I, I didn't you know, even notice it, but. Here you can see, you know, um, I guess they rebranded themselves uh, from fin mill models to combat models. So, you know, guess which one's which. Anyway, that's another frustrating thing. Then there's the art. We all usually buy with our eyes and our hearts. When we see something beautiful on the store shelf, we go like, I want to have it. It's only when you come back home, you see, oh crap, I bought another one. But the appeal of a scale model is by a no, the art box, the, the, the glamour, the, the fanciness of it. I understand that if a garage company wants to sell out these models, you know, it's very expensive to make box arts for various different models, but you can pay someone to draw you a model and you pay them like, I don't know, 100 euros or something, and then you have the license to use it on their box. Put the right labels on the right boxes. Don't use a Sharpie. That's regarding the box. Now we come to the inside of the box. Well, thankfully the model is absolutely freaking fantastic. So let us first take a look at this one, the 185, um, the newer version, I guess. And upon opening the box, this is what you get. It's basically instructions in some sprues in a very tightly packed bag. In the interest of time, I'll be skipping ahead a little bit, not showing you every single thing in the sprue. Uh, but the things that you will be able to see are absolutely fantastic. I'm using a macro lens and let me just say again, this is a 170 second scale model and it's absolutely packed full of detail. There is hardly any flash whatsoever and everything is sharp, clear, just fresh. It's absolutely fantastic. Even the attachment points seem to be on the mark. On certain pieces, a little bit too short, but in for the most part, pretty damn good and again the detail look at that every panel every gap every even the smallest thing is visible and it's just fantastic i guess the two unique things about these two models are that these are actually amphibious as well and the wheels have to be assembled from at least three parts so you have the sides and the middle make a little sandwich as you'll see in a moment Mmm, sandwich. Okay, let's move on. So here are the wheels. You see the middle part and the two sides where you glue them together and make a wheel. And here is a rudimentary seating arrangement for the passenger and the driver. The decals and the clear glass parts. Well, the glass parts are basically just uh, PVC strips, clear strips, and the decals are okay. They're not the best, but they are okay. The detail is fine, it's crisp, it's sharp, what more can you ask? And there's not many of them, so you don't really have to fiddle around so much with it. Now we come to the instruction manuals. Both models have this A4 type black and white manual that's stapled in the corner. And I don't show every single thing, but it's a pretty substantial manual. And I think it's okay, it's clearly laid out and pretty visible. You also get another piece of paper that depicts where the decals go and the paint scheme, how the model is supposed to be painted. And this is the finish, K okay, for uh, Posse 180. Yeah, so uh, let's take a look at that now, shall we? This one is also tightly packed, just like the first one, and here is the breakdown of all the sprues. The other one has a l one sprue more than this, but basically they're very similar. 
The detail on both is fantastic. Again, I'm using a macro lens. I'm very close. You can see that there's not a lot of flash and the detail is super crazy. For a 170 second scale model, my God, all just great stuff. I mean, look at that. Even the most minute details are seen and depicted pretty damn good, I, I must say. I'm mean, pretty impressed. Flash. Ah, uh, king of the universe. Oh no. Um, every now and then there's a little bit of a flash here and there, but nothing really that horrible. Nothing that a blade can sort. And um, like I said, look at that. So much detail. Here we see a widow bitty steering wheel and some struts and a spade. And because this is an amphibious vehicle, you have some propellers and the propeller casing and the dashboard shocks fantastic it has a lot of wheels and you have to build them uh, from three parts the outer the inner and the outer i guess a sandwich mm, okay not mm, don't go there don't go there okay yeah look at that beautiful wheels and some netting on the side which actually has holes in it crazy and here we have the clear piece of plastic that we'll be using for our windows and some markings for the finish k4 sisu basi yeah instructions on this one are pretty substantial they come in this a4 style paper clipped together on the corner with a staple and they're printed on both sides i'll just quickly glance over basically the manual because it's there's a lot of stuff to look at but you can give the you can have a general idea how it actually uh, looks and how the thing goes together i think it's pretty self-explanatory and this is basically the most technical part of the whole build where you have to kind of measure the axle but i guess it's okay and uh, yeah that's basically the manual done here we see where the decals are supposed to go it's just drawing nothing fancy and there's another piece of paper here that tells you um, actually where decals are supposed to go, I guess. <laughs> the first one was the paint scheme. Sorry. So yeah, that's basically it. Back to me. And there we go. I hope you enjoyed this little video of mine. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and commenting and all that good stuff. And I'll see you again soon in the next one.